Welcome to Dan's Talks. Uh, today's guest is Ken Oletta, the uh, well-known author and columnist of who has been out living out here for a long time in Sag Harbor. And I thought to talk to him about it. He's online and uh, wanted to know, first of all, how long have you, has, has it been that you lived out here? I, we bought our first house. We rented a couple of years and then we bought our first house in Bridgehampton in 1978. And we moved then to our second house, also in Bridgehampton in, in 1992 which is where we spend a good deal of time. Not total time, but we still have a place in New York City. The Bridgehampton part of Sag Harbor. No, right. the, it's not Sag Harbor. I'm a proud some Bridgehamptonite. Yes, I know. I, just, I had I had that wrong. Right? So, um, what is the, what book? You've written a dozen or more books. And uh, one, well, we, well, that's a dozen and one. And... Uh, but half of them have been bestsellers. Uh, and I wondered which one you thought was your best work. And I'll ask with, I'll start with that. Do you have well, one? Actually, I, I thought the most important work I did was a book that was not a bestseller called The Underclass about poverty in America and about the hardcore poor who, who don't have the same mobility that many poor Americans have, who then climb into the middle class and escape severe poverty. This is a group that is disproportionately responsible for crime, drug use, gangs, uh, antisocial behavior that, that alarms people. And it's a relatively small group. And it's not just Black or Latino, it's also whites. If you go to Appalachia and in parts of rural Mississippi, which I did when I reported that book, and in, in, first in a three-part New Yorker profile, and then in a, in a book that came out afterwards, in 1982. But did, did it lead you to any thoughts about how it could be changed or improved? Yeah, it did. And I, and I had that, I included that in the book, but it also was depressing and, and is very much part of our politics today in that the conservatives and the liberals, when they talked about extreme poverty or the underclass, they, they weren't speaking the same language. They didn't accept the same set of facts and their solutions were very different. The liberals, would, the left would say, let's just spend money. And the right would say, let's just get government out of the way. And, 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 and the truth is, if you have behavioral issues, uh, they're not solved by money or private enterprise. And, and, and so that's a conclusion I came to, but I, I found that it's very hard to bridge the gap between left and right then, as it's much harder to do today. Did you come up to any ideas about what could work for this group? Yeah, no. In fact, I, I, I followed some a, a national support of work program uh, that was initiated in the Johnson administration that was actually had some success. But in, you have to redefine what you mean by success. If by success, you mean that 65% of the people who get a guaranteed job and go through training programs uh, that 65% will graduate. Well, this was only a third of these people actually graduated. So two thirds failed. Is success one third success? With this group of people, it was. And so you have to re really relook at the, your definition of what is success. What uh, do you think that's applicable now? Is that program still in place? No, it's not. Um, and but but the but the people, the underclass that I wrote about, are still in place. And 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 some of these people, some of the gang members who commit these unbelievably violent acts and maybe abuse drugs, very hard to reach. Um, and so it, it's a stubborn problem. Yeah, we, we had this uh, story uh, just this last week. A man was convicted in Mattituck for try, trying to steal a car that had a baby in the back. And the woman uh, came out of his shop and said, my baby, my baby. And a guy said, hop in my truck. And they got him off the road. And uh, she got in the car with the baby. And then he sped off. And then they got he got him again. And and finally, they got out and then he headed him off the road again and he got arrested. And um, 
He's now heading off for jail. He's from uh, Holtzville, but uh, he's obviously not. He was drunk. You know, it was, it was this is kind of extreme behavior. Uh, and uh, I, I agree, but I, I'm not sure. I, don't, I just don't um, see how we can bring that to an end or maybe we can reduce it with, with the, using the kind of programs you're talking about. You can reduce it. And, and, you know, you have a basic choice in life. Are you an optimist or a pessimist? And, and, and if, if you say that two thirds of the people in a program that I'm describing fail, if you become a pessimist because of that, you're not gonna solve the problem or you're not gonna address the problem. And an optimist says, well, one third, after looking at the program, one third success is, is actually the best you're gonna do and, and look at the lives you're saving. I mean, I yes. lived with these people for three years and I saw some lives being saved. I also saw some lives that just, you know, cascaded into total despair and, and destruction. Oh, wow. What was the book that was the most uh, best-selling book that you've ever published and written? I, I, the, the two bestsellers I, I, I did um, were, one was Green Glory on Wall Street, which was about the fall of the House of Lehman Brothers and how the oldest investment banking partnership on Wall Street, even though very successful, came apart because its banking partners, the traders on one side, the investment bankers on the other, hated each other and, and, and wanted to kill each other. And so the human behavior destroyed the oldest investment banking partnership on Wall Street. That was success, very successful. And the other one was Three Blind Mice, how the television networks lost their way, which was a story uh, in the mid eighties about how the three networks were being disrupted by a new technology cable. The way cable is now being disrupted by a new technology, which is streaming and digital. Sure. And so it, it's, th those were the two. The, the one that's most successful worldwide was a book I wrote on Google called Google and, mm -hmm. and, and really a profile of and a biography of Google, how it came to be and, and its leaders. And that was one where I was basically parked at Google headquarters in, in Mountain View, California for a couple of years. Uh, tell me a little bit about the uh, uh, book you wrote about uh, Miss Holmes, who is now in jail. I don't know, yeah. She goes back to jail at the end of the month. She's on yeah. appeal, but she just lost the appeal. So she, mm -hmm. goes, I think, serves an 11 year sentence. She, uh, I wrote a profile of her for the New Yorker. And I mean, I thought she was a zealot. I also thought she was an idealist. I thought she really believed that she could, her system, a single finger prick of blood can give you the same results that the needles in your, in your arm give you. And, and she had a lot of support. The head of the Cleveland Clinic was a supporter. She had a powerful board, Henry Kissinger, George Schultz. This was, this was before it uh, came apart, right? Yeah, what happened was I, uh, John Carrier, the brilliant reporter for the Wall Street Journal, read my piece and he said this publicly. He said, you described her, I, I went back to her six different times. Describe to me exactly what happens when you take that little drop of blood and you put it in a nanotainer and then you put it in this mysterious machine you have. What happens? How do you get results from a little drop of blood because some people say you can't and i described her her response as comically opaque and john Kerry read that and he said that provoked me to go look into this and he ha has covered science and medicine much more thoroughly than i have had. and he came up with he exposed her basically as as doing something fraudulent and and eventually she was sued and now she's she's going to go to jail for eleven years. What was the name of her firm? Again? Theranos. Theranos. And on paper, and on paper was worth ten billion dollars, and she was worth five of that, half of that. Well, I couldn't keep her out of jail. <laughs> I'll bet she was not happy with having had to see the book you did, since they clicked it off. No, it was the, the article. She she wasn't happy with the article, but she was more unhappy with John Kerry's articles in the Wall Street Journal. Of course, I, I didn't say she was a fraud. 
He did. Yeah, I, know. I know. I heard, heard that. I got that. Are you looking forward to the artist writers game this year? I don't know. I, last year was so exciting. You can't top <laughs> last year. We were down, as you remember, Dan, we were down, I think, 18 to two in the right. last inning. And we wound up scoring, you know, 17 runs. Um, <laughs> two out. We're two out. And, two out. And, and I remember the, the, the rabbi, and the went, and the rabbi who I watched in batting practice, he was a good player. So I pinch hit him as the last bat. I, we had two runners on base and he had home run to end the game. It was well, it took a religious leader to win that game. Pardon? I think it took God to win that game. No, no, it, was just, it, was, it was one of the great thrilling. I, yeah. I don't think there's ever been, I played in the game 40 some odd years. I've never seen a more exciting finish. This is an annual affair, uh, which takes place in late August on Saturday, on uh, Saturday afternoon, uh, and has been played since 1948, I believe was the first time. It's for charity, and it's in East Hampton, and anybody is welcome to come out and watch. Uh, we'll try and do it again this year. We'll see what happens. Um, what are, you, what are you working on? Oh, you just got, what are you working on now, actually? I'm, I'm working on, on Rupert Murdoch. Oh, boy. That, that's a, a major story where he has changed reality in many ways in using the lack of, le of, of journalistic laws which don't apply to the internet. I think that's what I think is going on. Is that the essence of it, do you think? No, I, I, he's a guy. We've never had someone in the media with the kind of reach and power that Rupert Murdoch has. We've had Hearst in the United States, Beaverbrook in, in England. Murdoch is on three continents. They were in one country. And, and so he's in Asia, starting with Australia, where it, it began with his father, who only had one newspaper, his father which he inherited when his father died. And Murdoch built this worldwide empire, but he's in Europe and he's in America. And, and Fox News, we've seen the kind of power that that has in presidential and other elections. So he's just an interesting character and, and who, who has enormous reach and power. What do you like to do when you're out here in Hampton? So do you live here full time or you go back to the no, city? I, I, I go back and forth. Uh, we've lived here more since COVID uh, than yeah. we had before. And I, I finished my last book, which was about Harvey Weinstein out here. And actually by being out here for the last year during COVID, um, I probably saved five months writing. No lunches, no meetings, <laughs> just alone in a cave writing a book. So it was, it was, it was real easy. But when you go back to reporting, you can't do good reporting on Zoom or on the phone. You want to see, sit across from a person, watch their reaction, you know, yep. see the hat they're wearing and describe it, you know, like you did. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Yeah. What, what do you like to do when you're out here besides being in your cave? I, I like to, my wife and I are out here. The, the daughter and the grandkids and the husband come out. Uh, fairly regularly. Um, I love to cook. I, I, I mean, I, I find that very relaxing. Um, mm. We, we, um, I play tennis. Uh, I don't play softball anymore. I, I captain the, the writers team, but I decided that when my skills started to atrophy, I started <laughs> playing center field in the first games I played four years ago. Then I moved to less left field when I lost a step. And then when I lost another step, I moved to first base. And then when I realized I wasn't hitting line drives anymore because my bat speed <laughs> probably slowed, I said, oh, no, I'm retiring. Oh, that's good. Do you remember any of the older games, uh, some particular event? Uh, we all, I've, I've uh, been at the game, too. And the one I've always thought about was that time that Superman slid into home. But I also recall um, when... Uh, I think it was uh, Paul Simon went out deep for a high fly ball in left field and came down on top of the fence, which is a very he, dangerous. He was thing. he was playing left field. I was playing center field, and and we had it at the time. You had these low iron 
reinforcements to hold up the gate. And, and he's a short guy. And, and the, the reinforcements were probably, I'm looking now, four and a half feet. Yeah. Oh. And Paul jumped for a ball and, and wound up cutting his eye. And that's the last time he's ever played in the game. He just, uh, this, this is dangerous, you know. Anyway, he was a good athlete. He, he was fun. We miss him. Well, I want to thank you for the time you spent with me on this. Uh, can you think of just anything else you'd like to talk about? No, I mean, I, 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 I love it out here. I love what you do at Dan's paper and, and, and the fun and, and how ambitious you, you know, local newspapers all across the country, as someone who writes about the media, I see they're, they're dwindling and, and writers and journalists get laid off, et cetera. And to see your paper, local paper, expanding is exciting <laughs> and rare. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you something we've never had before out here is happening in the last uh, month. I'm getting calls from marketing and public relations people. I probably had 25 of them from people who are opening stores for the summer. I've, I don't think we've had more than one or two any spring that I've ever remembered, but they've all, all these stores get, they want the publicity. It's, it's an amazing thing that it's uh, turning into even further along than any of us might've thought back in the day. We, uh, we, we also want some of them to advertise in the Artists and Writers game though. Yes, you should do that too. All right. Well, thanks very much and, and uh, wish you wish you the best. And we'll, so I'll see you at the game one way or another. Indeed. Um, okay. Bye-bye. Ciao. Yeah.